Shovel Knight takes a lot from the past. The game has an 8-bit look, chiptune soundtrack, and mechanics borrowed from numerous classic NES games. Yet Shovel Knight is much more than a mere imitation. It takes what was great about those games and expands upon their ideas, creating something that feels both familiar and original. With fantastic stages, endearing characters, and plenty of clever secrets, Shovel Knight is excellent, regardless of whether or not you've ever played with power. The story of Shovel Knight is simple and surprisingly tragic. For years, the eponymous Shovel Knight and his beloved Shield Knight roamed the land, slaying monsters and searching for treasure. Their adventures ended after arriving in a mysterious tower and suffering an attack from an unknown force. Shield Knight presumably died during the battle, leaving a grieving Shovel Knight alone to deal with the Enchantress, an evil being trying to take over the world. In spite of it all, Shovel Knight still believes his love is out there somewhere, waiting to be saved. While the Rescue the Damsel plot has been done before, it works here because the game doesn't indulge itself too much. There aren't any lengthy sequences of exposition, just reminders of what you're doing and why you're doing it. One of the best examples can be seen after finishing a stage. Shovel Knight takes a well-deserved rest and drifts off to sleep, where he dreams of Shield Knight falling from the sky. You have to catch her before she hits the ground, while also typically fending off a horde of enemies. There isn't any punishment or reward involved, but you may feel compelled to succeed. For a game primarily about platforming and acquiring items, it has a cast that's easy to care about beyond their gameplay functions as allies or obstacles. You'll spend most of your time in Shovel Knight excavating your way through a series of increasingly complex stages. Much like Mega Man and its robot masters, these stages are always themed after a respective boss, such as the icy tundra of Polar Knight stage or the perilous laboratory of Plague Knight. Like the very best platformers, every level is distinct because each of them introduce plenty of new ideas. You're rarely stuck doing slightly tougher versions of the same thing. Not since Super Meat Boy as a 2D platformer felt so precise. Shovel Knight moves exactly where you want him to at all times. If you die, it's because you messed up. Starting out, Shovel Knight's abilities are rather straightforward. He can jump, attack, or dig with his shovel, and bounce off things in a manner similar to Scrooge McDuck. Before long, you'll also acquire a slew of usable items, such as an anchor that functions like the axe subweapon from Castlevania, and a blade that lets you dash through the sky. The game makes every action rewarding. You'll see a sparkling pile of dirt, for example, which indicates there's treasure hidden underneath. Gems and coins fly out as you dig through the mound until there's nothing left but a row of riches. That treasure could have been placed anywhere in the stage, but the digging causes it to be more of a spectacle than simply running over and picking stuff up. It's a small but appreciable touch in a game that's filled with similar discoveries. Even better than a good dig is the way Shovel Knight handles difficulty. It's a challenging game, but always manages to be fair. Anything that seems initially daunting can be easily tackled for those willing to take it slow and think before acting. Checkpoints are thoughtfully and generously placed throughout each stage, so it never feels like you're doing the same huge section of a level again and again. Death is also handled with a tough but fair approach. Upon running out of health or falling down a pit, money bags will fly out of your body. You'll then revive at the last checkpoint with a chance to retrieve what was lost, but dying in the process means the cash you dropped will be gone for good. Even when things do go horribly wrong, it isn't too debilitating since you only lose part of what you gathered. Shovel Knight makes death punishing without completely deflating your motivation to continue. Sadly, it doesn't hold up throughout the entire game. Since money is easy to come by, eventually you'll be able to purchase almost any item and upgrade you could want, taking the sting out of death in the game's final third. One of Shovel Knight's strongest aspects is that there's always so much to uncover. False walls and hidden pathways hide secret areas, and these areas are generally the most challenging part of any stage, often requiring tricky platforming, but they also yield great rewards. While finding secrets is satisfying in its own right, Shovel Knight goes out of its way to encourage players to explore. Certain items are tucked away in the hidden areas, and these items are required to conquer optional stages. These extras offer a ton of cash and are quite fun. Even if you don't need the money, it's all worth seeing. This is true well beyond the game's many stages. Shovel Knight's two towns are among the best areas in the game. Both are filled with ridiculous characters, such as a toad that laughs at his own jokes, and a man that worships the Tropel King, a giant half-trout, half-apple creature. All of these bizarre and wonderful people really go a long way in making Shovel Knight feel like an actual world, rather than just a collection of levels. 
the music strengthens the game's distinct feel with tunes that stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with classics found on an NES. Shovel Knight works well because it knows exactly what it wants to be. The people behind it have a clear love of retro games, and that collective passion has created something great. So often we play games that try to prey on nostalgia in the cheapest ways possible, whether it's half-hearted HD remakes or blatant rip-offs. Shovel Knight is one of the few games that not only honors the past, but also maybe something we reminisce about for years to come.